In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to set up DSP Trigger for use in your studio. While the plugin works perfectly well with DIY pads like this, today we'll be using it to enhance the snare drum on this Roland HD1. The first thing you need to do is patch your drum pad into a line input on your audio interface. This is a single zone version of a Roland PD-8X, so it can be connected using a mono patch cord. If, however, you plan to use a dual zone pad, you'll need to connect it using a stereo patch cord like this, bearing in mind that the free version of DSP Trigger only uses the head zone. Let's plug in the pad and move over to the computer to see how to set up DSP Trigger in your VST host. In this tutorial, we're going to be using Reaper. The first thing you need to do is add a new track. Now, open the Effects section and insert an instance of DSP Trigger. Now, because DSP Trigger outputs MIDI, we need to send that MIDI to a drum sampler in order to hear any sound. So again, we'll open up the Effects section and add a sampler. For this tutorial, we'll be using BFD2. The last thing you need to do is to make sure that the track is armed and that the monitor button is enabled. Looking at the interface, you'll notice that by default, the Calibrate LED is lit for new instances of DSP trigger. This is so that the plugin can figure out how hot your signal is. Just place some high velocity hits on the head and rim portions of the pad, like this. Calibration settings are saved along with the project, but you can use the current settings as default for new instances of DSP Trigger by clicking on the Save as Default LED. If you want to add another instance of the plugin, the setup is only slightly more complex. First, add another track. And just like before, we'll open up the Effects section and add another instance of DSP Trigger. Next, we need to route the MIDI from this instance onto our drum sampler. So, let's open up the input-output section from the first track we made. Over here in the Receive section, click on the down arrow and select Track 2. That's the track we just added. Now, output from Track 2 is fed into Track 1 and on to BFD. Again, we should make sure we arm the track and enable the monitor button. You should also make sure that you're using the correct input. Now, because we're using kick pad, we'll change the hit note to 35, which corresponds to the kick or bass drum in BFD. And now we're ready to play. While you could use DSP Trigger as the foundation for an entire VST-based drum brain, chances are you'll be using it to complement your existing kit, in which case you'll also need to route MIDI from your drum brain to your drum sampler, and that's what we'll do now. First, add another track. Next, choose the MIDI input that corresponds to your drum brain. Now we'll go back to the input output section from the first track and go to the receive section again and this time we'll select track 3. Now all the MIDI from your drum brain is also routed through DSP trigger and onto BFD. Again, arm the track and enable the monitor button. Now we can play the entire kit. <laughs> 